Let's talk about the reaction of a weak base with a strong acid. So commonly this will be seen in the titration of a weak base um, with an acid such as HCl. And one of the things we're going to notice here is that at the equivalence point, the inflection point on the curve that I've marked in yellow there, and here's um, <clears throat> where we are currently looking here, pH is less than 7 at that point. And that is the point where our base, our weak base that I've denoted A minus, you might see that capital B um, in other uh, texts and, and whatnot, um, is equal to the concentration of acid here. So at this point we've added as much acid in moles um, as we have started with weak base. Okay, and so that's the end point of the titration. After that point, the strong acid controls the titration curve and the pH. Well, um, as we're adding acid to that weak base, we are forming the conjugate base, and at half of the equivalence point, the concentration of that conjugate acid with the base here is going to be equal. And so by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, our pH will equal the pKa of the conjugate acid. Okay, so the conjugate acid is what we're forming here. Or, alternatively, we could say that the pOH is the pKb of our weak base. Okay, either way you look at it, it's fine, but normally we plot pH versus volume or moles of, of, of titrant added. And so normally it'll be in terms of pH. So think about pH equals the pKa of the conjugate acid, and you can get the pKb of the conjugate base by 14 minus the pKa. Either way you, you go at it, it's fine. Um, but that's what are the important points on this curve. So equivalence happens at a certain volume of acid added or a certain amount of moles added, and then at half of that, our pH is equal to the pKa by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So one of the things we have to remember is we have to perform stoichiometry first before we calculate our equilibrium concentrations, and we can do that via an ice table or that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in either the pH or pOH form. Well, let's do an example. Better to do an example than to keep chatting there. So looking at our mixture, we are taking 50 milliliters of one molar sodium acetate, so our weak base is sodium acetate. Well, we don't care about the sodium. It is the conjugate acid of a, of a, um, of a strong base, sodium hydroxide, for example. So it's negligible. It's going to float off as a spectator ion. So there's our weak base. We're going to react here with nitric acid. And we are going to form our conjugate acid, acetic acid, and then what's left over there, nitrate, it floats off never to be seen again. Okay, it's not, and of course we could all, all, also say that the nitric acid has already dissociated and formed H3O plus in one equivalent, and so our conjugate base of H3O plus is H2O. And so with this reaction it will go to completion. So we've got to keep track of everything. Starting with our molarity, we have one molar sodium acetate and we have two molar nitric acid. Our volumes are 50 milliliters, so 0 0.050 liters, and 10 milliliters, 0 0.010 liters. Got to convert because molarity is in moles per liter to get moles, which is what we always want to do with stoichiometry, um, we have to multiply that molarity by the volume to cancel out liters. So our initial moles that we're going to get from this is 0 0.05 times 1 is 0 0.050 moles of acetate, and then 0 0.020 moles of um, of nitric acid. Looks like I lost a sig fig there, so let's put that sig fig back in. Yeah, those are three sig figs on each of those. Okay, so 0 0.0200 molar 
um, or 0 0.02 0 0.00 0 0 moles and then initially we have no conjugate acid and we don't care about water because it's a liquid everything else is aqueous and participates in the equilibrium so zero moles to start with with our acetic acid our conjugate acid of our of our weak base well then we have a change not a change like equilibrium like an ice table but a change in in our concentration here in our number of moles because we're going to burn up all of our limiting reagent which is nitric acid the lower um, number of moles because we don't we have a mole ratio of one to one for the balanced equations so we don't care about the mole ratio but we're going to burn up all of our nitric acid in doing so we're going to react and neutralize 0 .02 0 0.02 moles of um, acetate as well and that's going to add a starting concentration of um, or number of moles of 0 0.02 moles of acetic acid as well and so our moles final after our calculation that we're going to get is 0 0.03 0 for nitric acid and then 0 0.0200 moles of acetic acid our conjugate acid so we've got a minus here weak base and we've got our strong or our weak acid conjugate acid HA and our strong acid is used up so at this point we can do an ice table where we now have a new equilibrium that can establish or an equilibrium that can establish with acetate our weak base forming our weak acid and hydroxide weak base reacts with water to form uh, um, its conjugate acid and hydroxide at this point we are ready to find our starting concentration well we've got a new volume of 0 0.0600 liters no nitric acid though because we added 50 milliliters to 10 milliliters so our new volume is 0 0.0600 liters and when we divide moles per liter we can get our initial concentration for our ice table of 0.5 molar in acetate don't have to worry about H2O and then 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.06 that's one third or 0 0.3 repeating for our conjugate acid acetic acid and then we're going to associate um, our water so we're going to lose some of our initial um, weak base and we're going to gain some of our conjugate acid and we're going to gain some of our hydroxide that forms because we dissociate water so at equilibrium we're going to have 0 0.500 molar minus x and 0.333 molar plus x of acetic acid and then x for our hydroxide concentration so we've got a couple of options here we can use the KB expression which is the equilibrium constant of this reaction of this weak base dissociation with water we can use KB given our pKa was 9.26 we can find KB from that value because KB can be um, determined by taking the negative log expression for pKa and, and um, doing the inverse function which is raising it to the power of 10 and we get our 10 to the negative 9.26 from that which comes out to be if we want a decimal notation of 5.50 times 10 to the minus 10 
for our KB. And what's KB equal to? It's equal to any equilibrium constants, the products, conjugate acid here times hydroxide, the products of a reaction that are aqueous and then divided by any aqueous reactants. Here that would be acetate, which is A minus. We plug in our values at equilibrium. Well, looks like HA is 0.333 molar plus X, but because our KB is so small, we anticipate X is going to be negligible when compared to our concentration, so we can drop that out of the expression times X divided by 0 0.500. And then we can solve for X, which is the concentration of hydroxide. We get 8.25 times 10 to the minus 10 molar in hydroxide. And that gives a pOH when we take the negative log of that to be 9.08. If we wanted the pH, then that is 14 minus 9.08 which is 4.92 and that's one of the things we were asked to find the pH of the solution okay and that's without using the Henderson Hasselbach equation but we could have easily used Henderson Hasselbach and found that pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the weak base divided by the concentration of its con of its conjugate acid and if we had done that we would have found that pKa, oh, I wrote pKa up here, that should be pKb, that pKa is 14 minus pKb, 9.26, and that comes out to be 4.74. So 4.74 plus the log of the weak base over the conjugate acid concentrations we get the exact same answer 4.92 for the pH so either way you do it it works um, you don't have to convert to pOH or pKb you can use the normal um, buffer Anderson Hasselbach equation but if you do it with an ice table you'd need to use pKb or excuse me KB here as we set it up and perform it either way you do it's fine either way works we were also asked to find the final concentration of acetate which started at one molar and then after reacting with the strong acid became one half molar concentration. Well at this point we look at what our X value was 8.25 times 10 to the minus 10 well that means 0.5 which is 5 times 10 to the minus 1 if we were to add or subtract away this very 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 small value nothing changes so really the final concentration of acetate is 0 0.500 buffers resist changes in concentration of their constituents when the ka is very weak there and the kb is very very small so we end up with about a half molar in acetate as well and so does this make sense always ask yourself that so we are we we started with here um a little bit less of the acid form than the base form so 0.333 molar versus 0.5 so with a little bit less acid than base we expect a pH that is higher 4.92 than pKa 4.74 and that's exactly what we have and I actually modeled our reaction with a simulation using the Henderson Hasselbach this titration would have a sharp drop off at the beginning into the buffer region here before the equivalence point at about one here that's equivalence added and so if we go to half that we get 4.74 where pH equals pKa at half the equivalence point and so we get exactly what we thought and we weren't quite to the halfway point so we were somewhere in here where our pH was greater than pKa because the base form is in greater concentration than the acid form at this point. So we're somewhere in that range.